So in this video, I am answering a question that I've asked myself for ages, and that is, what is the ultimate zig fishing hook bait? go that's the zigs fishing much more about the hook baits and the zigs themselves later in the video but to increase our chances and attract some fish in the area i'm going to mix up a nice little mix and we'll talk to you through that right now right so to try and attract some fish in the area i'm going to spot a sloppy mix over these zigs now zigs work all year round but until it gets really cold to create some attraction in the cloud in the upper layers it's really worth putting a few spots of a sloppy mix over to draw some fish in. So I'm gonna knock up what I use, and to be honest with you, you can use pretty much anything. One thing you are gonna need though is like a ground bait or a zig mix. That's like the main bulk of it. So put a big old bag of that in. This gets really messy at the moment. And then add to that pretty much what you want really. I do add a few particles that sink because what you want is a, a big cloud at the top, some bait that sinks, and then there is a bait that floats as well. So got a bit of hemp here. I'm just gonna put a little bit of that in. And this is just whatever you've got really. I've got some old boilies sitting in the garage, a handful of those. I've got a bag of pellets that I always carry with me, a few of those. This is all bait that sinks. And then we add a very small handful of floating pellets. So now we've got a few on the top, a cloud of ground bait in the middle sort of area and some bait sinking through. So we're working that layer for those zigs to come through. Classic me, look, split right in the bag. But with the pellets, don't put too much in literally a handful of floating pellets because you don't want to create loads of carp feeding on the surface because then you're probably not going to catch them on zigs i've got some liquid that i've had in the garage for a while big old glug of that and now we basically slot that up into an absolute disgusting mesh you can't really add too much water to it because you need it to be like soup really a real sloppy consistency so when you put that in a spot and it hits the water just explodes into a massive sort of a cloud of attraction. Like I said, throughout the well, sort of unless it's winter, really, I, I don't think this is that effective in the colder months. But certainly spring, autumn, any sort of summer time where there's a bit of temperature in the water, the fish are moving, looking for bait. That is a winner. It's pretty disgusting to stand here and, and mess with, and you are going to get messy with it. It's not a neat method of fishing but it is one of my favorites so we're going to fire three or four spawns of it every 10 minutes we'll probably put three spawns out keep an attraction in the layers and then we can get really into this video and what the video is about and find out what is the best hook bait when you're zig fishing Okay then, so those rods are fishing. Let's get into the main part of the video. And the question I want to get answered is what is the best zig fishing hook bait? Now for me, for absolutely years, the zig aligners with foam has been my absolute number one go-to. Literally three weeks ago, one session, I've had seven fish to 31 pound. And that's just what I'm confident is. Black foam especially, but red, yellow, little sticks of foam in zig aligners has been my absolute number one. But I'm gonna be very honest with you, a lot of the people I fish with are the other side and they are on about just pop-ups. Big old, bright, in your face, boilies sitting in top of the water somewhere in the mid layers. Now, for me, it's not the one that's worked, but they have got inside my head a little bit. A couple of times throughout the summer, they have outfished me, but then a couple of times foam, I've outfished them. So I wanna try and get an answer because they're messed with my head a little bit. Are big, blatant, in-your-face boilies better or worse than what I would class sort of, they must think they're naturals, but foam in a zig liner, like I said, in my head, that's number one, but I've never actually done this test to try and find out. So I want to squash any doubts in my head 
today, see if we can find out which one gets more bites. So they're both fishing exactly the same on adjustable zigs. I will show you the rig, hopefully after we catch a fish or when we recast, and we will then talk to you about the hook baits a little bit more as well. But yeah, they had a test, foam or boilies. Drop us a comment what you think is gonna win. Let us know what your favorite is, and let's reevaluate at the end of this to see if any opinions have changed. Oh, I think I'm in. Oh dear, I've literally just finished that talking bit saying about how my mates have got in my head that blatant pop-ups in your face are better. You might notice I'm playing a fish and it's on the <laughs> blatant in your face pop-up. It was probably, so I put those spawns out and then we've done that little talking section too. So probably, I don't know, five minutes after those bombs have hit the water and we are playing our first fish. Let's hope it's not gonna be our last. We did pick a venue where we expect to catch a few fish because obviously if you're doing a test, you catch one, it's not the fairest of tests. Although if you caught one in one and you didn't the other, I guess you could say that's a result. So yeah, let's hope we're gonna catch a few, but this one is coming towards the net and it was on, like I said, the blatant in your face pop up. an arm maker. That's fish number one, fat little common. And like I said, on the blatant in your face, yellow pop up. But obviously in the spirit of fairness, what I probably need to do is get this fish slipped back, get another bait on that rig. And we'll also talk you through the adjustable zigs that we're using as well. And then we need to get some more spawn back out over the top of those hook baits. Go. Thank you, buddy. Well, I was going to talk you through the rig, but rudely interrupted before we could get ourselves sorted by another fish. So that is a good sign. And this time, obviously on the foam so if this one comes in that's going to make us one one and experiment underway typically every time i seem to go fishing the conditions don't favor me <laughs> it's quite windy and i was wondering how well these zigs were going to fish but fish are going towards the net and yeah like i said currently one one Definitely not going to break any records, but I guess it shows that it does catch fish of all sizes. So, like I said last week, literally fished over £30, pound, or about three weeks ago. This week, what about that? Four or five pounds. <laughs> <laughs> but it's another fish, and all importantly, 1-1. One, one. So currently no clearer to um, deciphering what hook bait is currently fishing better. Right, so while we're out of the water, I've just quickly whipped back the pop-up rig out there just so there's a rod fishing. But this is the one that we just caught that fish on. A little bit of black foam, the brown zigger liner. That's, I mean, black's probably one of my favorites. It's just been good to me over the years. But the lead arrangement I've decided to use, an adjustable zig, just because it's so versatile and you can fish it at so many different depths. So for anyone who hasn't seen them before, you've got a lead system that runs freely on the line. This float here is buoyant, so that will pop up away from the lead, and then obviously your hook link comes to the surface. Now there's a special way that you have to cast these and set them, so what I'll do is, there's plenty of um, videos online about how to actually set up an adjustable zig. So this is a Fox adjustable zig. If you wanna know how to actually set those up, probably do a bit of research, because there'll be loads out there. But just before you cast them out, there's a little research, recess, sorry, just here in the top of the foam float and you just put a bit of foam in there and you hook your zig just 
in the end there like that. And what that does is it stops it tangling. So that's all you need to do to get it ready to cast out. Get it clipped up so you're fishing the same distance as your spot is going. And then what we'll do is I'll cast it out there and talk you through about how you set it up when you're down at the rod end of the business end as well. Right, so down here at the casting end, setting the float up to how deep we want to fish it. First thing is, you'll notice when I cast, is you can't really feather these in. They don't work well like a tight line, like you would if you're feeling a lead down. So as soon as it hits the water, you want to drop your rod tip, let it go slack, because you need that float to separate from the lead. So let's try and put that into practice. So cast nice and firm to hit your clip. Hit clip, bam, lower the rod, take your clip off, let loads of slack out. That's the first step. We now come down onto the rod rest. Hopefully you can see this. Now what I'm going to do is put this in the rest, put my bait runner on, and I'm going to pay out line now until that float comes to the surface. So we're going to slowly let it pick up. Like I said, this wind follows me everywhere at the moment. It's making all of my fishing pretty difficult. But what I'm going to do is keep it it's coming up. This also gives you an indication of how deep the lake is. There you go, right, so it floats onto the surface now. So what I'm going to do is wind down just so the float dips under the surface, which it just now has. Now, very important, my hook link, I always tie them to the butt eye of my rod, to just here at the butt of my reel. So I know if I pinch my fingers here and I wind down that exact distance, so I'm winding my fingers all the way down to my reel, to there. I now know my hook bait should be, I mean within a few inches, it should be directly on the surface. And now you just decide how far you want to fish. Now those two fish have come at two foot deep, so I'm going to grab two foot above my reel and I'm going to wind down again two foot. Okay, let's do two foot and a bit. Right, now we can clip the bobbin on and turn on the alarm. We now know that both of those are fishing two foot underneath the surface. That's a really good way of doing it. If you try and get that into practice what it said, so loosen your line, pay it off, your hook link's that deep, and hopefully that all made a bit of sense for you. But there you go, they're both fishing. It's time to get some spawns back out there to see if you can catch a few more. Today has certainly been one of those days. We had two fish really quick, expecting it to be mega, and it, it normally is here, but it just hasn't really happened. It's been really windy. I think that's affected the zig slightly, but they do fish in the wind, but it has dropped and it looks a little bit better now for a bite. I've kept going, I've, I know the process works, I've kept the spawn going over the top, I've changed depths, I've changed colours, I've got a bit of yellow foam on there now and, and the yellow pop-up just because I mentioned black's my favourite most of the time but that's in clear water I think black works really well imitating a beetle or something like that but when it is much more murky then I think colours do come into it so we've gone bright on both at the moment we haven't given up and like I said the conditions definitely now they just feel a bit better for a bite. So let's hope if we keep drumming that spawn in, making a bit of noise, can't help, it can't do any harm, can it? It can only help. I mean, digs do catch just leaving them out there and you can catch quite a few if you land on the fish, but in high stock venues, I just think ringing that bell definitely does make a difference. So I'm sitting here watching the water, seeing if I can get some fish moving. There's a couple sort of moving around though. So everything is crossed that Perhaps as the afternoon draws on, the fishing picks up a little bit.
trust in the process. <laughs> I did say that I feel like the wind was definitely making a difference. And as the evening, or so as the day's drawn on, should I say, definitely dropped and I felt there was just a window there where those zigs were fishing much neater. Like I mentioned, they will fish in windy conditions, don't get me wrong, but I just, I don't know why, it's just, I think it's a personal confidence thing. Like when you can see the sloppy spot mix hanging around for longer and the zigs don't like lean over in the wind, then for me, I just find it more confidence. And I think, you know, if anyone's ever, oh no, <laughs> no. I think if anyone, I was about to say, I think if anyone's done any zig fishing, then um, I think it's all about confidence. I can't believe that. That was on that little bit of yellow foam we changed to. Look at that. Nothing wrong with that either. Razor sharp. That's one of those things. It happens. <sighs> All that effort. <laughs> well, I say no reward. There was a little bit of reward there. We got the bite. Decent little bite. But no fish to show you. Anyway, like I said, it feels a little bit better now. Perhaps there's a chance we can get another one yet. Stop. Like that. <laughs> like that. Well, you just sent me what another <laughs> bite. And just like that. I was actually saying, I think we're gonna get another bite. Do you wanna get the camera on? And um Yeah, no, you just get that feeling, don't you? Like certainly I said it already, once that wind drops, you get that feeling. Cause I think it's because you can see more. I generally think it's a for me, it's a bit of a visual thing. When you can see a bit of activity rather than waves lapping over it, yeah, it just makes it an awful lot better. And that one was ripping. Did you get the camera on in time? <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. I think so. <laughs> that one was flying. So let's hope we don't lose it. And left-hand rod means it's on the um, on the boilie. So not really learned a lot here, are we? <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's the best, best zig hook bait? I don't know. Um, but what I do know is this one's given me the run around and it's somehow gone over or under this line. So let's try this. Oh no. Just tied it in a knot. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. We're off. Whew, thought that was going to be disastrous then. is a turn up for the books. I've fished this lake for a lot of years and actually it originally started as a match water and the fish got a bit big and now a lot of people are doing what we're doing now, carp fishing. But I've never had a 20 out of here and this one at 25, six, six. 25, <laughs> six is 100% comfortably my biggest fish out of this lake. So it may have been a little bit of hard work. We may have had a quiet middle, but that it's well worth coming just for the day alone. So, a few quick pictures, I think. We'll get this one slipped back. And you do have to be off here before dark. So we've got a little while before that, but what I'll probably do is it's not gonna get any better than that, I don't think, for me. So I'll probably put the rods back out there, fire some spawns over them, and then start that slow pack back. No, I am so, I was gonna say surprises like that. Is why we go fishing. And getting wet like that is why we don't go fishing. That was not 
on the car. <laughs> Low packway never fails, does it? <laughs> always, always time to get the rods back out. Oh no, don't say I've done it again. Last time we got lucky and it came off, but I've wiped out again, it's a nightmare. I am fishing them very, very close to each other, but where's this one gone? Let's try and get that back over there. Wee! Oh, I think it's off. Right, let's concentrate on getting this one in and just as the rain starts coming down, whatever size it is, probably going to call it the last one and this is on the right hand rod, the yellow piece of foam, can't really say a resounding victory can you, but this has been three bites on foam, two bites on the boilie, but the bigger fish was on the boilie. So let's get this one in. We'll have a little evaluation at the end. And yeah, another fish to win. Oh yeah, what a nightmare. Right. That's a, uh, perhaps a bite off and sort out job that. That's a, uh, don't worry about untangling it job. We're going home. Let's um, <laughs> bite those rigs off. Two yeah, zigs. Let's just have, twisted. A, let's just have a little look at it. Don't <laughs> look in there. Look, you got two. Uh... Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear. A mere baby compared to the last one. I managed to sort out that mess. And that is a fish to end on, albeit only a small one. But yeah, three bites on the foam, two bites on the boilies. Haven't think, or well, don't think we can really say that that's a conclusive answer to what's better. I think. In my conclusion is use what works for you foam i'm confident with for me and venue for venue will be different as well so here's one if you're going to linear take foam with you because that is all about the foam but yeah there's other venues like i said where some of my fishing mates are taking me apart by using actual boilies so perhaps take both in your armory let us know in the comments what you think is your favorite but i think they all have their own place it's a wicked way of fishing i hope if you've not fished adjustable zigs before that may have given you a bit of inspiration to do so and uh, go and catch yourselves a few zig caught carp as well but that is it for us we're going to head off home a huge thanks for watching please hit that subscribe button and hit that like button as well